Hi, it's Bruce from Nature Calls. Just going to do a quick do-it-yourself, make your own hammock uh, using the new fabric from Rips Up by the Roll. It's their one ounce uh, Robic fabric. What's really cool is that it's actually their wide, so it's 68 inches wide, so one ounce for per yard of 68 inches wide. Um, I bought four yards of it, so right there I'm at four ounces of just in the fabric. And I also made the suspension for it with the adjustable ridge line out of Amsteel uh, 764. I did continuous loops uh, for my gathered end so I can adjust it. And then I did six foot whippy slings and all that's out of the Amsteel 764s. So the, the real key here is that this, to have a nice hammock um, and this could probably easily carry a, a heavier guy because it's the aerobic uh, fabric is uh, a, it's a double ripstop, so it has a diamond ripstop and then the standard little square ripstops. Uh, but they're super easy to build. If you want to get into having a high quality hammock, uh, you can do it for you know right around. I think all in, I'm going to be maybe at fifty dollars for. For this hammock um, so you can do it you don't have to you know just buy a cheap hammock to get into hammocking they're super easy to build and i'm going to show you how to do it so i don't know if you can see it but it has the diamond grid like that plus it also has the regular box rip stop so it's kind of a double rip stop going on here plus this is their xl so it's, uh, most times you buy fabric, it's 58 to 60 inches wide, and this is 68 to 70 inches wide, but 68 usable, so you're getting a wider fabric to, altogether. Now for suspension, on the ends here, that's a continuous loop. I did a modified sheet bend and that's how I do my gathered end so I can adjust this. So I can make it a longer or shorter hammock and that's on both ends. So right now I have it set at 11 feet, which is what I normally have mine. So, but it's a little bit wider fabric so I could actually shorten it up to say a 10 and a half footer. Off of there, I've just direct linked uh, whoopie slings that I made. They're standard six foot whoopie slings. And before I did a soft shackle, but I'm just trying to eliminate components. So I just have that directly there. I have my um, adjustable ridge line also connected directly on. But then on the other end, I am using a lightweight carabiner. And you know, for just quickly hooking on things, uh, it's, I found it really handy the other night. So we have uh, continuous loop coming out, did it in black on this end, and direct to the whippy sling. All this can be taken apart real easy. Take it down, I'm gonna do some other projects, uh, but I, I'll weigh it out and uh, put the weight down in the bottom or flash it on the screen. Now, I would definitely recommend using a decent thread. It's a polyester thread. This is the Guterman thread. This is the Guterman thread, um, Mora 70, which is pretty much what everybody uses, but it's not necessary. Um, you don't have to use this thread. And the way I make hammocks, there's really nothing that is dependent on strength uh, out of the thread that you use. Um, I used to make hammocks with a, a channel end where you threaded your your gathered in with a channel with a with a line or a rope or whatever. But I found that just is actually a weak point in in hammocks. After building quite a few, and using quite a few quite a few times, I do a sheet bend, modded sheet bend for the end. And so you're really getting away from the reliance on stitching altogether. In fact, you could do this whole hammock without stitching at all, honestly and you'd end up with a hammock that would probably last you quite a while. The stitching that I'm going to be doing is just a hem around the outside just to make it clean looking. 
but um, if you get like a heavy duty polyester thread for this project it actually does everything that you need it to do mm -hmm. so uh, I use different threads this one's real common that the Guterman threads real common and so it's actually pretty easy to find or you can get it from ripstop by the roll uh, I think they're giving a free spool now with an uh, order of fabric which is great but there are other 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 threads that you can use um, and you're really not you're not going to rely on it the way I make make um, hammocks so what I like to do is the less failure points the better and sewing and stitching is a failure point in my opinion so let's get this all threaded up and uh, get going so here's the, the fabric and I think uh, with shipping it was around $35 for the four yards. Pretty good high-tech fabric. And it comes with what's called the selvage edge on it. It's kind of rough. That's how they manufacture it. Um, instead of cutting it off, what I do is I just fold that over and that's my that's my hem. So I don't even do any trimming at all. And what I do is I do a hem, it's about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now this fabric isn't calendared so either either way it goes it's fine um, other than thread you want to make sure you have a, um, a real sharp needle you want you want a needle that will sh sharply go through and poke a hole there's there's normal thread normal needles they actually push they're a little blunt and they push the fabric the fibers aside like say in denim or cotton but this you want to punch a hole through it and you also don't want to punch a ton of holes uh, that's where your weak spots are some people pin pin their fabrics I'm not a big fan of pinning I, I want to limit the amount of holes in my hammocks so I just find that I can fold it over and eyeball it just fine And the nice thing that hope if you have a sewing machine is you have a little button that drops the needle in and, and holds it in the fabric and that's real handy with this kind of slicker fabric so I'll just start sewing along here and I start off slow usually just to get the rhythm of the machine and lock stitch get so far I just kind of pull it out do my folds and it's fine if I hold it somewhat taut I don't need to pin it and I don't have a walking foot or anything like that I probably like to get one and learn how to use one but I made a lot of things without a walking foot once I get the rhythm of it I can speed it up a little bit and then just continue on the other thing is you want to set your sewing machine for a longer stitch length. Um, you don't want a lot of fine holes. You want to try and get it. It's uh, most of the manufacturers do an eight stitches per inch. So if you can figure out, do some samples on your other fabrics, on some raw fabrics, and count out what stitch length comes up with about an eight inch, eight stitches per inch. Um, that's probably a good starting point. I've been real happy with with the setting I have on my machine. Mine's actually 3.5 to get an eight, uh, whatever eight inches or eight per stitch per inch. Now why do I encourage people to make their own gear? Uh, lots of reasons. First, I think that you get a better understanding of quality of gear and what it takes to manufacture gear. And you know, when you're looking at different gear and so sort of some of it's really cheap, online and, and uh, you can get it for almost next to nothing I can't really manufacture um, hammocks for less than what you can get online it seems I mean it's, it's crazy I mean our tarps I just can't even buy the fabric for what you can buy some of that stuff online for but I think you get a, a real understanding so even if you don't make your own gear a lot you get to understand the quality and, and the, and the in, when you look at something that you're going to buy, you go, okay, that's made a certain way. 
The other reason, especially for hammocks, is that I've tried out Hennessy's and war bonnets and all kinds of bridge hammocks and regular gathered in hammocks and I own a ton of hammocks and to me there's really just the two categories there's a bridge hammock and there's the gathered in hammock and the cool hammocks that have come up and what's really cool is they've all started with guys building them in their living rooms the Hennessy's and the war bonnets and even Eno's and you know they all started with just people in their living room starting out so so they're great and they put in designs to make it easier for people to get say get a horizontal lay when it comes to the gathered in style hammock you know they put foot boxes in um, they've put uh, attached bug nets on them so they've done a lot of things that but they all really come from all those really come from the just a basic gathered in hammock and if you learn the principles and the theories behind just the gathered in hammock and how to make that work for you they're extremely extremely comfortable and I I've tried all those hammocks and I just keep going back to my gathered in hammock I think it's more versatile I can lay diagonally this way and in the middle of the night I want to diagonally that way I can with one hammocks that are built with a built-in foot box you have one way to go um, I like to have a, a bug net that's not completely attached. My bug nets are on the outside, made like the Franke style. I really prefer those. I like prefer a, a full one. Um, I just it's just more versatile to me. And with the, today's bug net fabrics, you can get you can make them really light. And then if there's no bugs, you just don't even bring your bug net. So then you're going super light. So I think it's really you know when it comes right down to it. Even even with the the bridge hammocks, I mean. They're all kind of on the same principle. Some people have gone just a little bit further, you know, to make them uh, more complicated to get a better lay in those. And, and I got to hand it to those. I have a Helston Eureka Chrysalis, and, and the guy who designed that, you know, he really paid a lot of attention to the bias and the stretch and the dynamics of the fabric to really get a really cool hammock out of it. I really like it. I wouldn't even attempt to personally build one. He did such a good job. Um, and I couldn't, re I couldn't reproduce it. But the only, the only hammocks I haven't tried are these new ones where you basically are lying perpendicular to your ridge line. Um, I'm not even that intrigued by them personally. <laughs> so, so, but I think it's really, you know, if, if you get a, a, the right length, and I think 12 feet is, gives you plenty of room to adjust. I think, you know, this wider fabric um, that also gives you a lot of opportunity to have um, less sag. I mean, there's, there's lots of reasons for all these things, but it really comes down to good gathered in hammock is you don't even have to sew it to make one. Um, all the other suspensions and riggings and all that are, you know, you can go really simple or really difficult with them, but they all come down to the same basic principles and uh, to each his own which is great about this hammock i think it's it's love it's 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 a fun hobby to get into um, you can go whatever direction you want to go there's some great cottage industries there's some great people that are really doing some great research in it but you can make it yourself so uh, let's continue on and get this all hemmed all the way around A little little tip that since you're doing such long runs like 12 foot runs down the sides you know, keep an eye on your bobbin and like right now I'm getting down to the the end of this bobbin so I don't like to have like stop and starts on the long runs on the sides um, I don't mind so much on the gathered end part so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of the gathered end with this amount of bobbin thread um, so I can refill it for the final side of the hammock on the long end. Just keep an eye on that. Hey, okay, I've uh, hemmed all the way around, and so now I'm just gonna go make some continuous loops out of am steel, and that will be my gathered in portion. I've got videos, and I'll put links to all that. I'm gonna make the, the continuous loops for my modified cheap end 
on the ends. I'll make uh, whoopee slings for it now and an uh, adjustable ridge line and some soft shackles to tie it all together. Okay, so here's the finished Robic. Hello, puppy. XL one ounce fabric, so we're running about oops, a little twist in it. Um, I am running, say, about five, a little over five ounces right now. So I'll do a measurement in the morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and test it on out tonight. Doesn't stretch much, which is nice. Like a little bit of stretch, not a ton of stretch. But uh, so in all, making the whoopee slings, I made two whoopee slings. I made uh, continuous loops for the gathered ends. Made the adjustable uh, ridge line. And I'm using a carabiner right now on that end just, just uh, see how I like the setup. But it uh, probably took me two hours total to make this. Uh, total cost maybe $45, 45 to $50. I'm gonna sleep in it tonight. I'm gonna do a test on an underquilt, but uh, seems to be just, just, just like any other hammock. I guess that's the point, that these gathered in hammocks are really just the same. This one's a little, a little wider fabric to it, which is nice. Uh, gives you a little bit, you know, you don't have to uh, have quite as much sag with the wider fabrics. I spent a night in the in the, the new hammock. You know, it's really, I mean, it's it's just like every other hammock that I have. I mean, it's a gathered end hammock. Um, not, it's a little bit more uh, unstretchy, or not as stretchy as my other hammock that I have. And you know, really, it uh, really doesn't make that much of a difference. I don't think. I I, I think I do. Was used to the stretchier hammock, the stretchier fabric. It doesn't mean that this is in the mass or more. Hammocks are suspended and they're moving and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, we'll, keep, we'll keep going with this hammock and uh, pass on uh, another hammock. But I think that the real point is that hammocks are really a certain design I mean, it's not a new invention hammocks have been around for ever <laughs> so, so it's and they're not that hard to build and they're the design's not that complicated and you know, I guess I really encourage you know if, if you ever thought about it give yourself get yourself some fabric and uh, make yourself a hammock it's a lot of fun all right I'll see y'all later Have a great day and I'll see you on the trail